Hiya. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm so I'm so proud to be from Monmouth Sure and Gwent right now. <laughs> I'm like, woo! Uh, they are, yeah, they, the nature isn't neat team are amazing. Um, and all our LMP coordinators are fantastic. Um, they've worked so hard for the last few years to get to where we are. Um, yeah, I did some work for um, Torvine, um, mapping the potential for um, long, long grass left. And we estimated that it could be as much as 40% um, that they could leave long. Initially, then, their initial target was 15. That was what they were they were going for initially. And um, we, we, we think that they could achieve quite a lot more. So there is a lot of potential in the little corners and things. I sort of wanted to kind of big up that fact for people. And that includes leaving, you know, big rugby pitches. They were all included in that total. So um, there, there's a lot of potential there. The question I kind of wanted to ask was, a lot of the materials that you've developed are for overcoming that kind of public perception problem. Um, but my sort of awareness is that there are a few other barriers, especially for, from the land manager point of view. They might want to manage their land this way, but can't because they can't afford the machinery or things like that. And I was wondering whether there were sort of other initiatives um, within the It's For Them that would help with those problems. Because certainly for Torvine, once they had their machinery, that was what sort of sparked them and that's what got their grounds maintenance on board um and then they were off and running kind of thing so yeah I was just wondering whether there was work kind of being done on those sort of problems as well. The, the likelihood that Tarvain got the, the that machinery was through local places for nature uh, funding which is still ongoing and uh, still got funding for uh, you know they had quite a lot of capital funding which allowed the building buying of that machinery so really, it's for non-for-profit organisations of access to that funding, and it's the local nature coordinator would be able to advise on, um, you know, access to that funding, uh, I think, is the best way so, so to so approach your local nature co um, coordinator and see if they've got access to getting that funding to buy equipment. Some organisations in Carmarthenshire, they have kind of developed a machinery ring for the town councils so they you know so that they can share that machinery between them because it's a big quite heavy outload so they have kind of a developed a machinery ring a scenario and to talk more about that machinery ring probably can contact Rachel from One Voice Wales who's the local nature partnership coordinator with Win One, One Voice Wales that road verge link that I put on earlier on has got you know links to your local LMP um, on the Wales by that link and also a link to uh, Rachel to contact. Uh, Laurel, um, I've got a supplementary, but Chris has had his hand up for quite a long time. So, Chris, can I turn to you if you'd like to un unmute yourself and ask you a question? Yeah, thanks very much. Uh, and I think this is uh, good from a government uh, separate part and through local authorities but i'm I've, I've been campaigning for a long while for about 16 years and particularly seven years i'm on the steering group of garroding nature partnership and i've also got a field an acre and a half in the first few years i had it i had local farmers cutting it twice a year but you can't rely on them because they're busy and uh, they can damage their uh, cutting um, equipment i have a sit down but it, you have to cut it too many times and I've been uh, at our nature party and Kerry de Kent Council to get some sort of hub for a long while. And I spoke to uh, the, uh, our uh, councillor through Kerry de Kent Council, but nothing's happening. Um, and I, I have a plea actually from Caroline to get something sorted with Kerry de Kent Council with a hub. So, because there's a number of people like me who, who and I'm, I'm into conservation, I've uh, worked with red squirrel uh, pine mite conservation but I don't have the space or the money to buy large equipment uh, for an acre and a half field. And there's lots of people in Kerry like that. And they go on uh, Kerry County Council Facebook asking for help, pleading for help. And um, we will increase, if we have a hub in Kerry we will increase meadow um, possibility biodiversity tenfold, hundredfold, if, if we can be helped. So, I, I plea, it's a plea really for Caroline to, with Kerry County Council to, to try and get us some help 
to 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 be able to cut twice a year. So I I think Caroline might have had to leave because I can't. I'm still, I'm still here, Catherine. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, lovely. Do you I, want to yeah, I was just thinking, do you think the Wildlife Trust, I know in North Wales, the North Wales Wildlife Trust um, helps landowners? No, no, no there, there was a project in Kerridigan with the Wildlife Trust and and there was a lot of people who, who went for it, but uh, there was about 40 people and only 20 people and our meadows were checked and only 20 people out of 40 went in, th I don't know how it works, some sort of project with meadows and I wasn't picked. At the time, I'd cut my fillet recently, so there wasn't much flowers to show, which isn't fair. Um, and I'm just, I, I, I know what to do, but I can't do that with the equipment I have got, and I have to cut it regularly. Uh, and I cut and I keep stuff on the side, I keep all the stinging nettles, and but I, I know what to do, but I just haven't got the, uh, the feasibility to do that, the equipment. But okay. Kerrigan County Council will have the. the they have equipment, but they won't cut. Uh, they won't come and cut, you know. But we 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 need some sort of hub. Um, okay. So the wildlife trust um, they had some sort of project, but only twenty people out of forty were 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 dealt with. They had too many people coming mm. forward. So that shows you there are a lot of meadows there, and people want to do things, yeah. but they can't because they don't have the not the know how, but the equipment to do it. So I think uh, last week there was a magnificent major project run by Plant Life uh, and the funding for that, you know, that project ended last year. But one of the big objectives that they have in that project was to um, create a, a local source for providing of seeds and kind of having a, a meadow, medic, having meadow hubs as well so that people can have equipment. So Plant Life has had an additional funding uh, to for meadow meadows this year. So I think maybe best to because it's not wouldn't be just local to Kerry Diggion. I know Chris is in Kerry Diggion, and you know it's, yeah, it's but we haven't got anything like that. And I've been really campaigning really, for years to do that. Yeah, but it would be okay. equally across all of Wales would be in a of other folks and other across all of Wales would be in a similar situation. So um, this weekend, um, Fela and Morgan are having uh, an event um, which are having displaying all machines so that people can come and see the machines. And I'll um, plant life are, are there as well. And I'll have a chat with plant life and see how uh, they got any plans to extend this, um, you know, get that kind of hub going in the next three years project. So I'll take it forward. I'll have a chat with them at the weekend because I'm down at the Bailey Club Morgan Chris. Yeah, but plans and uh, plans are no good, and three years is no good. We need to do things now. Yes, we. Uh, and I've been campaigning for sixteen years, seven years, and nothing's happening. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a long time to to get going. I, I know that I'm sure Carolyn, Kathleen, and uh, and I have you know, been banging our heads against this for 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 a long time. But looking at the chat here. It does look like things are starting to move. Um, they're not moving as fast as any of us would want, but things are starting to move. And uh, there's, uh, Carolyn has um, very kindly put her email in the in the chat there, Chris. So if you'd like to contact oh, her yeah, for the webinar, to, yeah. Um, yeah. then hopefully we'll see a bit more bit more progress. Um, shameless plug to have a look at one of our previous webinars that uh, Plant Life did which was looking at the potential for generating biofuel from arisings from, uh, from uh, wildlife friendly management of grassland. There's a huge opportunity there to actually make this profitable. So in, in future, we might not be worried about getting grants and things to get machinery. It might actually pay us to buy that machinery so we can collect the biofuel, uh, uh, collect the arisings and turn them into biofuel. Um, That's another thing I was going to bring up about why don't they take the grass off you and make fuel out of it? You know, have a have a look at our our other webinar, and um, that will give you some ideas. But that is something that I really hope that we can take up um, much more widely in Wales. I know in Malmo in Sweden they run their entire um, fleet of council vehicles off biogas, which is derived from um, kitchen waste that they collect. Uh, so there's there's a huge opportunity for this. I know that um, some farms have uh, 
uh, I think in the southwest of England, have been provided with anaerobic digestive equi digestion equipment. This is to reduce slurry pollution into waterways. Um, but again, they're, they're running their tractors off the, the biogas which has been produced. Mm -hmm. So this isn't going to happen immediately. It's not something we can solve at this webinar, but, but things are moving. Um, what someone has said about reaching out, I am part of the local next part, so I'm, I'm part of the steering group, so I'm an yeah. important part of it. So um, somebody's put that, but I'm already part of it. Uh, and I've been, uh, I'm, I'm the second longest person in it. Uh, you know, so uh, anyway, uh, I'm, I've, I've been there and I'm there already. So <laughs> nothing's happening. Okay. Um, so, Chris, thank you so much for that one. Yeah. Are there any other questions because I know that Carolyn and Kathleen are, are busy people so if we can release them early I'm sure they'll be happy um, and uh, and Sue while well, we've got you here um, is there anything that you that you'd like to interject and um, you're describing a, a Meadows group with shared um, uh, machinery down in Monmouthshire can you just give us a bit more background on that. Yeah, they're, they're, it's a. Um, can you hear me? Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm on my phone. <laughs> I can't get Zoom on my laptop. Um, so yeah, there's a there's a. Um, a Sorrel probably knows all about the, this group as well. They're a, a group of people who own um, own small meadows, biodiverse meadows, so they don't get kind of normal. Um, Welsh Government grants for agriculture, but they formed themselves into like a collective and um, includes uh, quite a number of, of um, sort of county botany recorders and people like that. So they can, um, so that, yeah, they, they've got the expertise to go out and do surveys and they've got shared uh, livestock. Some of the groups, some members of the group have got livestock which can be transported around to, to, to provide grazing. I mean, some of, the, some of the meadows are just people's gardens. Some of them are um, small fields. Um, and uh, they've also got their own machinery, I understand as well. So they can they can um, bring them bring the machinery out to. They, they've cut my, my. I've got a wet field, and they've they've been out and cut my wet wet field, and I've raked it off. Um, and it, yeah, it's it's a it's a very useful uh, network in in Monmouthshire, the the Monmouthshire Meadows Group. They've been established for quite a long time. So that's Monmouthshire Meadows Group. Worth looking at. Are there are there any any further questions uh, from anybody in the audience? Please raise your hand now. Otherwise, I'm going to say thank you so much to to Carolyn for taking the time out of a very very busy schedule today to to speak to us. Thank you very much indeed to Kathleen for corralling everything and um, organising the videos, and thanks to to Sue for for dialing in and for her participation in in the videos um thank, thank you thank you very much and thanks to everyone for all that you're doing and your enthusiasm let's grow it <laughs> thank you <laughs> right Bye. thanks very much indeed everyone i'll be recording this video and putting it on the on the youtube channel for the green infrastructure forum and uh, i recommend you to go and watch some of the previous uh, webinars that we've had thank you very much once again, everybody, and uh, I'll see you at the next webinar. Bye for yeah. now.